Hello, I'm making a game. I aim to make a combat and exploration focused action role playing game where you play as a cute little sword fighting animal in a dark fantasy world, alone or with a friend in local cooperative play. My first goal is to create a player versus player deathmatch, just to get the combat down before adding enemies and expanding the world. So far, I've hand drawn some art, got two players moving and swinging swords with hit detection, and started to familiarise myself with the Godot game engine, which I'm loving so far. Let's take a look at what I got up to in my second month of developing in my free time. Having hit detection is all well and good, but it doesn't actually do anything. The first thing I did was set up a stats script to keep track of a player's health, save it on a generic parent scene, and created two child scenes, one for each player, which inherit the functionality of the script, but allows for the values such as current health and max health to be changed independently. Now, when a hit is detected on a player, a health point is taken off, and if the health reaches zero, the player quite simply ceases to exist. I added some gorgeous temporary UI to the screen which updates whenever a player's health changes, and I was ready for my first ever playtest. Right, let's go. Oh, bring it on. Oh, this is historic. We're looking like... Oh, oh no, he's got me! Ah, oh, yes, here we go. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> It was super rewarding and a ton of fun to be able to play a game I'd created with someone else for the first time ever, but it's also clear that walking up to an enemy and swinging your sword isn't enough for a complete combat system. It's time for a dodge roll. I started working on my first roll animation and realised a pretty annoying error I'd made. The pivot points for my body parts are not where you would expect them to be. When rotating a body part, you'd ideally want them to either pivot about their centre or where they attach to the body, but mine are seemingly arbitrary, which makes animating moves with lots of rotation, such as a roll, a bit awkward. I could have fixed the pivots, but not without breaking all of the animations I've done so far. So I maybe inadvisably ploughed on and got a roll, which I think looks okay, and played backwards makes a pretty cool backflip. Before working on the other three directions, I wanted to implement the rolling mechanic in-game, so I could make sure the timings of my animation looked good before continuing to another three directions. It's at this point where I should perhaps explain the controls I would like for my game. While I will be adding controller support, I'd also like the game to be playable with two players on one keyboard and mouse, to make the co-op accessible to those without two controllers, which is inspired by old cooperative flash games such as Boxhead. For this reason, I want to keep the controls pretty simple, with player 1 using WASD and player 2 the arrow keys for movement, and player 1 using V and B to attack and use an item, and player 2 using left and right click. So back to rolling. As well as having an option for dedicated roll buttons, I wanted an option to double tap a direction to roll, which may just be me overthinking things way too much, but on the laptop I'm using to develop the game, the arrow keys are lower than the other keys, which makes pressing another button with your left hand feel quite unnatural and uncomfortable, hence the double tap option. I'll also allow the player to rebind the controls, should they want to move control of the roll to their right hand. But anyway, enough about controls, back to development. I added some code to detect double taps, and implemented a roll state, which plays the roll animation, sets your velocity to a set speed in the roll direction, and makes you invincible for a few frames. I added stamina in much the same way as health, which gets used up to roll and attack, and regenerates over time, and added some acceleration and deceleration to the start and end of a roll to make it feel a little more natural. I continued working on the roll animations in the other directions. I found rolling up and down particularly tricky, as it involves the order of the feet, body and head reversing depending on how far through the roll you are. For example, in the first half of rolling down, the head is at the front, then during the second half, the feet are. The way I got this working was by using the show behind parent property, which moves the layer to the back. By default, I had the feet at the front, but with the show behind property on to move them to the back, and turned it off on the feet and on on the head to swap them during the animation. 
And there we have it, rolling in four directions. I think they look a little janky, but I hope you can at least tell what they're supposed to be doing. I found myself pressing roll during the last few frames of a previous roll animation, which didn't trigger another roll and felt unresponsive. So I added some code to allow another roll to be queued up. I also made it so you can trigger a roll immediately following an attack, cancelling the recovery to idle part of the animation, which also helps make the controls feel a bit more responsive. I then spent way too long figuring out how to allow diagonal rolls by tapping up and then left, for example. A problem I've noticed is that it's not particularly apparent when you land a hit on someone, so I added some knockback to the player when they get hit. It's still not super clear, but hopefully some sound effects, blood, and maybe a bit of screen shake will help further down the line. I also noticed that the attack anticipation was super slow, which felt sluggish and gave a huge window to allow a dodge. So I duplicated my attack animations and made versions which halved the anticipation time from 0.6 to 0.3 seconds, which feels a lot better. I'm keeping the original slow ones just in case I want to use them on an easy enemy later on. So if you remember earlier, I spent ages justifying the use of double tap to roll. Well, yeah, I changed my mind. Now that you only have 0.3 seconds to react to a strike, having to double tap a button is a huge disadvantage and feels pretty clunky. So I added in dedicated roll buttons, B for player one and right mouse button for player two. I was going to use right mouse button to use an item, but I guess I can use the middle mouse button or a different key near the arrow keys, as using an item will be less time sensitive than a roll. I'll still leave double tapping as an option though. Next up, I made heavy attack animations, which take a little longer to wind up, swing through a wider arc, and cause the player to lunge further. In game, if you hold the attack button for 0.2 seconds, you will perform a heavy attack. If you keep holding attack, you will hold your sword behind you until you let go, unless you press roll, which cancels the attack. Once you have performed a heavy attack, you can tap attack again at the end of a swing to perform a combo heavy attack back in the other direction, just like with a light attack. I then did some tweaking to make heavy attacks use more stamina, knock your opponent back further, and deal more damage. Next up, I made some stagger animations, which I'm pretty happy with, despite them looking a bit like the character is having a little dance. But I think it'll be clear what is happening in context. I made the player enter a staggered state whenever they take damage, and after forgetting to apply friction, I got it working fine. But I don't actually want the player to be staggered every time they take damage. For those of you who don't know, let me introduce another mechanic I'm borrowing <coughs> from Elden Ring and the Souls games in general. Poise. Poise is similar to health points, where attacks, and especially heavy attacks, deplete it. And if it reaches zero, you enter the staggered state, which interrupts any actions you are performing and allows enemies to perform follow-up attacks while you are defenseless. I got Poise implemented, which adds a nice little layer of depth to the combat. I then spent a little time improving the hitboxes to make them more accurate, made the R key reset the scene so you don't have to relaunch the game every time someone dies randomised which character you are on respawn, and added a kill counter to incite competition. I then started playing with Godot's particle system to add some cartoony stylized gore, which really makes the combat feel so much more satisfying, as you can now clearly see when you've landed a hit or been hit. I did some playtesting, tweaked some values, fixed a few bugs, and called it a month. I'm happy with what I've got done this month, and I'd say I've achieved my first goal of creating a deathmatch prototype. There was a few other things I was keen to add, such as a menu and controller support, but I haven't quite found the time yet. However, I am keen to get people playtesting as soon as possible, so I've put the project up on itch if anyone would like to have a play and let me know what they think. Thanks.